Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, um, in this lecture we are going to discuss the first thinker in our syllabus that is Raja Ram Mohan Roy and um, from Raja Ram Mohan Roy we will be uh, looking at three themes in his thought and in his work that is religious reforms, modern education, freedom of press. So, uh, today we are going to discuss um, his, um, his social and religious reforms and his ideas about religion, society and um, how he actually conceptualized uh, the role of religion in the larger social and political, uh, political space and sphere in India. So, um, Raja Ram Mohan Roy um, as uh, many of you are aware is considered as the father of modern India. Now, um, uh, why, why is it so? why he is regarded as the father of modern India, what is his contribution. And um, there uh, one can, one can uh, look at his um, role not just in responding to the colonial challenges that was there. So, the context in which he was writing and articulating his thought and ideas was a kind of situation where Britishers has established their rule in India. And then uh, there is a kind of um, challenge to the Indian uh, counterparts as they do not have uh, really a religion worth the name and that religion is full of idolatry, superstitions and all kind of ritual practices which does not really help in cultivation of mind, cultivation of good human being and things like that. And uh, so, um, he, was, he was articulating, thinking and operating in a time here there was a kind of colonial dominance and dominance not just military or the physical, but more so in the intellectual, uh, intellectual sphere as well, where uh, everything which is western and European is considered and regarded superior not just by the colonials, but by the many Indians also. So, uh, Raja Ram Mohan Roy was thinking in that context, where he is trying to establish or assert the good practices and the worthwhile ideas that was there in Indian, Indian, um, Indian intellectual tradition including Hinduism at the same time when he is actually criticizing many evil practices or bad practices in the Hinduism. So, and more than that he was also arguing about the western concepts and ideas especially his views on modern education and freedom of press that we are going to uh, cover in next lectures. He provided some kind of legacy for the subsequent thinkers to think about, articulate and uh, develop on from the idea he was articulating in such context. So, uh, that is the reason he is considered as the father of modern India in a sense his um, focus on not just uh, believing and practicing something because it has been practiced for uh, many generation or for millennia, but because it is rationally convincing. So, his focus is again on the uh, rational approach to religion, to social reforms, to polity and the political process also. So, that is the reason he is regarded as the father of um, uh, father of modern India. In what ways he was contributing and articulating his ideas? So, he was actively engaged in many ways, not just as his official capacity of a munshi, uh, munshi um, and uh, also as a landlord and uh, a petitioner, but also as someone who was deeply engaged in the social, political and religious issue of his time. So, through his memoranda, books, public activities, 
for religious, social, educational, economic and political reforms. He inaugurated liberal reformist modernization in India. So, he was actually writing his text, he was actually debating with his contemporary uh, peers and intellectuals and uh, thinking about the social, educational, economic and political reforms, which in a way establish a kind of liberal thinking in India and uh, began a new era of rational enlightenment discussion and debates about social and political issue in India. And that is also perhaps one of the reason why he is categorized as or uh, considered as father of modern India. Now, in his thought what you see and that is something related to the first introductory lecture we have had is uh, this kind of um, continuous evolution from a nationalist localized understanding or approach to the cosmopolitan international uh, approach as well. So, again in Raja Ram Mohan Roy, you will find him as a cosmopolitan thinker at the same time a nationalist reformer and um, his focus being on the rationalist thinking. So, in his approach why he is uh, uh, leading or uh, a kind of break from the Indian intellectual tradition in the modern era is his focus on the rationalist thinking, rational approach to reform society, to reform religion, to reform polity, to respond to the colonial uh, domination and uh, uh, things like that. So, in his thought also you will see a kind of uh, deeper emotional intellectual engagement with the social and religious issue that concerns the national polity that is his uh, nation. So, he is a nationalist reformer in that sense. At the same time, his approach towards the monotheism and we will discuss, he is, uh, he is actually also a cosmopolitan thinker uh, in that sense. So, here his uh, understanding of man, religion, society, polity is not just limited to his nation, but also can be applicable to the other nation as well. And that is the approach in most of the modern Indian political thinkers as we will discuss in the next um, uh, thinkers when we will discuss. Now, uh, if we look at the influence on his thought, we will see a different, uh, a different kind of um, uh, sources or uh, intellectual, uh, uh, intellectual tradition which influence his thought. So, that includes Perso Arabic, Classical Greek and Vedantic as well as the modern western thought. So, in uh, Raja Ram Mohan Roy, you see a kind of movement away from a narrow particularistic kind of understanding about religion, society and the role of man to a kind of more broader and that more broader approach in his thought comes from his familiarity or understanding of different tradition or intellectual tradition of thought which includes Perso Arabic because he, he was very familiar to the Perso Arabic and Islamic tradition, his uh, father and himself uh, being very closely related to the uh, Mughal empire and for three generation their family served the Mughal empire. So, they were well aware and because of his education which we will discuss in a moment, he was well aware of the Perso Arabic thought. The classical Greek and the modern western uh, thought he, uh, he, 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 he learned on his own through his education, through his familiarity with the colonial administration and, um, and thinkers. And also uh, his deeply emotional intellectual engagement with Indian tradition of thought, particularly the Vedantic thought. So, in a, uh, in a way in his thought you will find the amalgamation of all these different traditions that allow him to think about religion and society in a broader way, not in a narrower limited way of understanding. The second is he was also influenced by the many historical uh, incidents that was happening, especially the uh, French revolution and also the freedom movements in Spain, Ireland and Latin America. So, these historical movements also influence to a great extent his belief in the liberal ideas of um, individual, society, religion, etcetera. Now, the other point that uh, you will see in Raja Ramon Roy is his mastery over various languages 
and that is also something uh, which allow him to think about and read from various sources, from various tradition and then develop his ideas on religion and society. So, he is a polygot in the true sense of the term, where he is not just confined to any one uh, tradition or any one language and had a kind of narrowistic, chauvinistic kind of idea. So, he was very comparative, uh, very broader in his understanding and articulation. So, he is considered to have mastery over 10 languages, which includes Persian, Arabic, Sanskrit, English, Urdu, Hindi, Hebrew, Greek, Greek, Latin and French. So, this mastery allow him to think about these ideas of religion, uh, monotheism, pantheism and other things in a more broader and comparative, comparative ways. Now, uh, if you look at his, um, uh, his uh, uh, scholarly works, these are basically, um, uh, there are mul numerous tracts he wrote but the most significant works is Tuhpat ul Muahiddin, which is also translated as a gift to the uh, days that conceptualize his major thinking and articulation about religion and the role of religion in social reforms or the uh, rational thinking of human being. Uh, and also, he was uh, responding to the other challenges, uh, especially the Christianity and the Christian missionary. So, this text, um, the percepts of Jesus, a guide to peace and happiness is another such important work in his scholarly works. Now, if you look at his, uh, uh, his time, uh, that is uh, 1772 to 1883 and he was born into a high ranking orthodox Brahmin family in West Bengal and um, this family has the distinction of serving the imperial Mughals for three generation and that is why his familiarity with Arabic, Persian, Islamic sources and tradition. Uh, this long standing service under the Mughals explains his familiarity with the Indo-Persian culture. Now, uh, it is interesting to know about his education. So, he was educated in Persian and Arabic uh, tradition in Patna, then uh, where he studied many works including Quran and uh, uh, made to learn Persian and Arabic and then he moved to uh, Banaras and in Banaras he studied many uh, Hindu texts including uh, many Vedas and Upanishads and Katha Upanishad has some significant influence, uh, influence in his thought and he began to understand um, this Vedant or Advait Vedant uh, uh, philosophy uh, there in Banaras and began to think seriously because of his prior knowledge or familiarity with Persio, per, Persian Arabic uh, uh, tradition, he uh, began to also seriously think and reflect about a lot of Hinduism uh, 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 text and uh, uh, tradition. And <coughs> then in his um, professional uh, professional life, which um, uh, began with uh, this um, uh, European service in 1803, uh, uh, when he becomes the Munsi or what is called private secretary to the collector of Murshidabad. And that allows him to seriously study English language as well as the developments in contemporary Europe. That is the ideas of Bentham or utilitarian philosophy the uh, focus on greatest benefit to the greatest number. So, in, uh, in his approach, he was actually uh, very um, uh, broad uh, in terms of his, um, his understanding about society and religion, because of his familiarity uh, with different intellectual tradition as I was saying in the beginning. Then in 1814, after serving in, um, in um, colonial administration for a decade or so, he decided to settle down in Calcutta and for the next 15 years, he was engaged in furious and at times very reactionary uh, kind of uh, debates with the orthodoxy, especially Hindu pundits and the publicists over the true uh, meaning of Hinduism. Um, and many issues including the Sati abolition, modern education and freedom of press. So, on modern education and freedom of press, we are going to discuss it in our next uh, two lectures, 
but here we will confine to this um, idea on social and religious reforms that he was advocating and, um, and articulating, debating with the many, many of his conservative friends. And here, uh, I will just wish to name some uh, thinkers. So, on the one hand, he was uh, responding to the conservatives among the contemporary intellectuals, where they were arguing that we should uh, learn modern education and uh, that modern education should not interfere with our glorious or superior Hindu tradition or Hinduism, that kind of things. So, he was in a, in a sense um, engaged with the Hinduism and Hindu thought but also uh, aware of the many evil practices in Hinduism and that uh, uh, challenge which he posed to such practices and such evil practices actually furiated many uh, of his conservative friends. He was also in that sense um, challenged by many, uh, many radicals right, like one Terozio. He was again a radical figure in among his contemporaries who argues that it is very difficult to ascertain Raja Ram or Rai position, because uh, on the one hand he seems to criticize and attack Hinduism, at the same time he want to bring out the true meaning or true philosophy of Hinduism. And so, it is a, uh, it's a difficult proposition for many of his radical friends that he was taking. This period between 1814 to 1830s, um, was a very uh, productive uh, period in his uh, life in terms of his intellectual contribution and also in terms of his mobilization of social and uh, political opinions for abolition of a lot of evil practices including sati which we will discuss in a moment. So, um, uh, during this period as I was saying the most productive phase of his life, he authored more than 60 tracts and pamphlets which in all the three languages, English, Bengali and Sanskrit. So, uh, this was most productive period in uh, Raja Ram Mohan Roy life. This uh, uh, period was also intentionally polemical and very productive and he published uh, along with those 60 tracks which I was uh, uh, telling you, um, uh, three uh, journals or newspapers in Bengali, also in bilingual that is English in Bengali and also in Persian. So, in Bengali he published Sambad Kaumudi, in uh, uh, bilingual he wrote Brahmanical magazines and uh, in Persian he wrote Mirat ul Akhwar. So, uh, so, and through all these most of the contents in all these uh, newspapers or journals he himself wrote and through papers he was articulating the modern liberal reformist ideas on religion, uh, religious practices and challenging many orthodoxy fundamentalist approach about religion and society. Now, uh, in later part in 1830, he went to England to plead on behalf of Mughal emperor to enhance his pension and he successfully argued enhancement of the pension for the Mughal emperor and it was increased by 30,000 pounds on uh, and he has a wide network um, in England uh, with um, you know, with uh, MPs, with the leaders and he also made the king, um, uh, king there. But, uh, but besides that uh, petition, he also has his personal agenda. So, while in India he was talking about lots of liberal ideas and modern um, political uh, discourse and developments that was taking place in Europe and elsewhere in, um, in the world. In England, he was writing more about the economic circumstances, social circumstances, challenges of colonialism in India for the England. So, he was also uh, intentionally engaged in the intellectual discussion and debates about the future of India, the condition of India and how that can be reformed or enhanced or how people can be empowered. And um, uh, that, uh, that uh, intellectual engagement, he, he continues to uh, promote even when he went to uh, England. Now, um, in 1832, as I was saying, he appeared before the select committees of House of Commons to be interrogated at length on the material and the moral condition in India under the company administration and he wrote a number of uh, tracts about such economic condition about India. 
now uh, this testimony uh, that he wrote, uh, he gave uh, to the select committee it's a, uh, a very valuable source material for the study of early indian response to colonialism now uh, uh, raja ram mohan rai was very conscious or aware of the fact uh, that um, uh, he uh, he was living in a, a situation when india is ruled by a foreign power the british the colonialism is the reality of indian political and um, uh, civil uh, civil life now in that condition how indian intellectuals articulated and responded to such colonial um, colonial rule or colonial challenges raja ram mohan rai was one of the uh, towering figure among the intellectuals who responded to the challenges of colonialism where he imbibed certain uh, liberal uh, principles or values uh, that is there in the uh, modern european political thought and thinking at the same time deeply uh, engaged or uh, reflected upon the hinduism and its value in uh, the modern times uh, raja ram mohan roy died um, after a brief illness in england where he is buried so in his short life he most uh, uh, productive life he had in uh, in india is from 1815 to 1833 where he wrote a number of treatises uh, had argumentation with conservative as well as the radicals and also his intellectual works like um, uh, tohpat ul muhaddin i was um, telling you and the other works he produced uh, during uh, that time and also led uh, the political uh, social mobilization for the abolition of sati modern education and other uh, reforms in modern india now if we talk about his religious reforms so uh, one can uh, reflect uh, uh, his approach to religion uh from his quotation where he writes that there is always an innate faculty existing in the nature of mankind that in case any person of sound mind before or after assuming the doctrine of any religion makes an inquiry into the nature of the principle of the religious doctrines now here it is a very um, very significant quote here he is uh, he is arguing about the role of rational uh, decision on the part of individual before conforming before uh, following or before accepting any religious doctrines or principle of religious doctrines so uh, he is uh, considered uh, such inquiry as a result and he is very uh, very selective in his word that sound mind so you should not follow any religious practices or religious principles because it is written somewhere or because it is being followed for generation or for centuries until and unless you use your own faculty which he calls innate faculty to rationally decide to rationally understand to rationally argue to rationally inquire until and unless you are uh, you are convinced through your rational inquiry about the principles of any religious doctrines you should not follow it and that is his approach that's his rational approach towards social and religious reforms uh, reforms movement now um, for raja ram mohan roy in uh, the historical context in which he was articulating and arguing the immediate problematic was the social and religious degeneration or uh, degeneration that he saw around his existence or his local communities or in india at large now this social and religious degeneration one can understand by the wide prevalence of ignorance superstitions idolatry polygamy and infanticide so uh, this is uh, some of the major challenges that raja ram mohan roy faced and he thought the very capacity the innate faculty to reason to argue to inquire is actually uh, degenerated because of this wide prevalence of some of the uh, challenges that is um, uh, that is mentioned here and even the idolatry so people are deeply religious but that uh, uh, religiosity does not come from uh, their um, their rational approach to uh, that religion and so what happens here in this kind of practices you 
follow a religion, you claim to be deeply religious, but that religiosity do not help you to cultivate your uh, mind, to cultivate your, uh, uh, your, um, uh, your thinking, to help you to develop morality, to help you to have better ethics. So, for him more than the, f uh, so what you have here is a kind of form of religion, which is widely practiced, believed in and followed, but it lacks the very spirit which helps you to develop morality, to develop ethics, to develop individuality, to de think about um, uh, 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 social and political issue in a rational manner. So, uh, Raja Ram Mohan Roy was uh, finding these things as a kind of uh, major challenges and a significant reason for the political or the social degeneration of his own people and he was challenging, he was responding not just to the colonial administrators and their domination about Hinduism or um, uh, the uh, debasedness or what is called uh, this inferiority or uh, superstitions and other practices in India, but also he was challenging or, uh, or responding to the widely prevalent um, uh, evil practices in that in his society. Now, in his idea, if you have religious reforms, that can also lead to uh, social reforms as well as transformation in the society. So, for him religious reforms is not just a personal matter uh, limited to the individual and through that one can um, uh, one can uh, uh, achieve or accomplish a spiritual heights or uh, other things. For him, the religious reforms is at the center of social and as well as the political transformation in Indian society. Now, um, from his wide ranging or comparative study of religions in the world, he considers the th three basic tenets of um, all religions and these are uh, three basic tenets in, in all religion, particularly Islam, Christianity, Hinduism and other major religions of the world is belief in one universal supreme being. And from here, he developed his thought on monotheism which, which we will discuss. Then the belief in the existence of the soul. So, for him the soul is as uh, significant in human being as his material, social and political well, uh, well being and the existence. So, the soul and especially when he talks about religion and religious reforms. So, he was critical of um, uh, uh, practices and rituals or ceremonies, which merely satisfy the form of any organized religion. He was more concerned towards the soul or the spirit of religion, which enables the individual to develop morality, to develop ethics and then better contribute in his personal and also in his community social life. So, for him the religious reforms in that sense is at the basis of both uh, social and political transformation, including the cultivation of human uh, mind, uh, thinking, uh, developing morality and ethics. So, for him uh, the, um, uh, the soul, uh, which he believes is the part of the basic tenets in all the religions, which believes in the existence of soul and then believes in the life after that. So, he considered these three um, principle as the best basic tenets that is there in all the religions. And he as I was saying in the beginning was well familiar with the many religious texts including in Islam or in Christianity and his study of uh, uh, Hinduism. Raja Ramohan Roy developed his ideas on Hinduism or the role of religion from his wide ranging understanding or comparative understanding of religion in the world. Now, what he um, uh, uh, also find in most of the religion besides these three basic tenets and you, uh, you will find that this kind of thought is also there in Vivekananda or in Aurobindo or many other modern um, including to some extent Gandhi, the Iswar Allah uh, Teru Naam Sabko Sammati Di Bhagwan. So, for him this uh, God in uh, any religion is one and the same. Um, and in many Hindu tradition, uh, there is this belief that there is only one God, different peoples call him 
in uh, different names, but essentially uh, the um, uh, uh, existence of God is in singular, there is only one, uh, one God. So, uh, that is his understanding, but what he finds also is in all the religions there are many false and objectionable dogmas and doctrines including in Hinduism as well as in many other religions including Christianity. Now, specifically in Hinduism, his attack is on polytheism and also idolatry. So, the idol worship uh, and uh, that worship is considered as the, um, the uh, major uh, religious um, uh, or uh, representative of the religiosity or religious behavior of the individual. And the polytheism, you know the kind of gods that you have uh, in India and he believes that this polytheism polytheistic uh, gods actually um, creates sectarian morality. Sectarian morality which means limited to one locality, one community and that kind of things, not about the universal uh, or modern rational man living and contributing in larger society starting in his uh, or her nation state, but also thinking about uh, globally or universally and responding and contributing to some of the global and international challenges. So, he his approach and that is why he is also not a nationalist reformer, not just a nationalist reformer, but also a uh, cosmopolitan thinkers, because his approach is towards the universal, towards the global. So, uh, in his religious uh, doctrine, now we will discuss about the uh, 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 objectionable dogmas or practices that he had found in Hinduism and the two is po polytheism and idol idolatry. Now, these practices are there in other traditions as well, but we will focus more on Hinduism. Now, in uh, his articulation of religion and true religion, he focus on the monotheism. There is only one singular and to a great extent, it is influenced by Islamic um, Islamic idea of Allah as one supreme being and uh, many Hindu 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 uh, Hindu treatise as well. So, uh, this is one of the most uh, uh, significant aspect of his religious thought. Now, he believed that monotheism is the fundamental message of Vedanta. So, the pantheism the idea of millions of gods and which led Christian missionaries to criticize Hinduism, because there is so many uh, God and goddesses and there is no one organized religion or text or um, uh, philosophy and that, uh, uh, that puzzled them, that made them believe that superiority uh, of Christianity and there is only one religion that is Christian religion and that is why they promoted uh, uh, religious conversion uh, and um, uh, such things. So, um, uh, for uh, for uh, Raja Ramon Roy in Hinduism particularly, he considered the uh, uh, Vedanta and its message of uh, uh, one singular uh, single uh, God uh, as the basic uh, source for his understanding of mono, monotheism and he, uh, he continuously promoted his understanding of uh, uh, this kind of understanding of monotheism rather than pantheism that was widely prevalent supported by lot of conservative friends and intellectuals and Raja Ramon Roy had to suffer because of his beliefs in uh, monotheism against uh, idolatry. He was actually excommunicated and he uh, had to, um, uh, he had to constantly uh, uh, fight this conservative um, uh, ar argument about maintaining the status quo about religion and religious practices, especially the orthodoxy. So, his idea of a single unitarian God was his corrective to the polytheism of orthodox Hinduism and to also Christian Trinitarianism. So, in Christianity also there developed after uh, some time this idea of Trinitarianism and in Hinduism we are well aware of the existence of millions of gods. So, uh, he thought this uh, monotheism, uh, this unitarian God is a corrective measure for such kind of uh, beliefs, especially promoted by the orthodox uh, uh, section of Hinduism. So, he believed that monotheism supported one universal 
moral order for humanity, while polytheism justifies sectarian morality. As I was saying that different community having different gods and the uh, their understanding, their moral, ethical uh, behavior guided by such practices is actually sectarian in its approach. Whereas, Raja Ram Mohan Roy was arguing about a morality or ethics which is universal and applicable to uh, the whole humanity, not just one. And that is a kind of shift from a nationalist approach to a cosmopolitan global approach in his thought even on religion, religious morality and ethics and that makes him a very uh, fascinating and as I was saying the first modern, uh, modern Indian thinker to uh, articulate the ideas about religion, society and politics in a very rational uh, and modern, modern way. Now, his argument uh, uh, with uh, Christian missionary was to establish the uh, strength of Hinduism even when he himself acknowledged some of the evil practices in Hinduism. So, he believed that Hinduism is not inferior, where uh, Christian or Christian missionaries were not happy with uh, his approach, because for them it is the Christian or Christianity which is only the true religion and the that is why they wanted conversion. So, uh, Raja Ramon I believed that Hinduism is not inferior to Christianity, although he admitted that the Christ's central teaching can lead mankind to universal love and harmony. So, while he acknowledges the uh, contribution of Christ, which may uh, uh, which will lead if followed truly by the mankind to universal love and harmony, to peace, uh, to happiness, but uh, he refused to acknowledge Christ as a uh, divinity, uh, divinity. So, um, uh, he believed that the original Vedantic message of the unity of God was superior to the anthropomorphic conception of God contained in the Bible. It is because Christianity justifies the death of Christ for the atonement of man's sin against God. However, Vedanta teaches that sincere uh, repentance and solemn meditation can establish victory over sin. So, here Raja Ram Mohan Roy are, is arguing against the Christian biblical anthropomorphic understanding or conception of God, where one person sacrifices his life for the sin of others, for the empowerment of others. He believes in the Vedantic teaching, which believes that the sincere approach, sincere uh, repentance and meditation will actually establish the victory over sin and every individual himself or herself is capable of overcoming such um, uh, such sins and practices. Okay. Now, uh, uh, so to briefly discuss his views on Sati, which is the practices he challenged not just politically or socially or emotionally, but also using a number of uh, religious texts. So, his approach to Sati, which is a social problem, but it has some religious sanction and he rejected um, uh, or he uh, challenged such practices using the re religions. So, religious reforms or his social religious thought is not just about uh, a scholastic debate over the meaning of true religion or uh, true message of Hinduism or true meaning of Hinduism, but also to, to remove, to eradicate widely prevalent practices like Sati. So, uh, Sati and his views on Sati uh, represents his social religious thought. He rejected this theory that wife can or has to uh, sacrifice herself for the sin of her husband and he cited many religious texts to show that uh, these texts actually permitted the wife to continue her life even after husband's death. So, mainly because of his arguments and for this he was fiercely opposed by the orthodox section of uh, hin Hindu society, including his own family, especially his father. And um, uh, he was actually giving the reason for uh, abolishing Sati using the religious, uh, religious texts, ancient Hindu uh, uh, religious texts, which permitted women to live the life 
even after the death of her husband. And largely because of his argument and political public mobilization, Lord William Bent, uh, Bentinck banned, legally banned Sati in 1829. So, this, uh, this is the greatest contribution of Raja Ram Mohan Rai perhaps in the history of modern India, where his approach to religion, uh, religious practices help in formulating a law which ban a widely accepted or prevalent uh, practices of sati in India. If you look at his views on caste, which is a bit ambiguous. Now, he actually practiced or used sacred thread all his life and yet he was uh, very ambiguous about the practices of caste in India. Now, uh, he believed uh, in principle that God makes no distinction of caste it is the main made uh, distinction that is there and um, and he considered this uh, division between and among the caste is one of the reason for want of unity among the Indians. So, uh, he wanted caste to be reformed and that is the basis for the overall unity among the Indians. So, uh, but in his practices he continued to wear sacred thread and that is why his views on caste remain somewhat ambiguous. His approach and if we assess his thought, his religious thought what we find is, he uh, tries to protect the true spirit of Hinduism and to protect this true spirit of Hinduism, he fought the orthodoxy on the one hand and the external force on the other. So, he uh, protected the true spirit of Hinduism or Hindu religion from both internal and external threat. The internal threat came from the Brahmins or the orthodoxy or the orthodox section of uh, Hinduism which tries to protect the uh, Hindu or Hinduism and um, that did not allow the large section of Indians to understand what is the true meaning, what is the true message of the text because that is in the Sanskrit which is in the position of the Brahmins alone. So, he was trying to um, protect Hinduism from the Brahmins on the one hand that is the internal threat and the Christian missionaries and their practices of conversion which is the external threat uh, from the outside. So, for the practices of dogmas and um, other ritual um, ceremonious um, um, practices, he considered the priestly class especially Brahmins for the promotion uh, and maintaining the status quo because it helps in their uh, personal benefits and not in the benefit of those who are actually doing such practices, um, uh, rituals and ceremonious practices. Because ultimately the role of religion is to uplift the man, to, uh, uh, to enable the man to develop certain morality and ethics which will come once that person or individual approach the religion and religious doctrine rationally and on that basis develop certain ethics and morality. That is what he was focusing not on the um, uh, practices of uh, rituals and dogmas that was promoted by the priestly class. The Christian missionaries that uh, was uh, operated in different parts of India, they attacked Hinduism on several ways by abusing and ridiculing the gods and saints in Hinduism. They believed the excellency or the superiority of Christianity and um, there is nothing worthy or worthy enough to be followed or accepted by the men. And actually, uh, if such practices, that means different gods, saints, their beliefs and values practices, it does not really cultivate the better, better things in human being or the individual. It actually helps them to degenerate. So, that is the Christian missionary's understanding of Hinduism and Hindu practices. Now, they also had certain, some uh, allurement in terms of material, uh, material benefits to, uh, to convert them to Christianity. What is the uh, approach for religious reforms in Raja Ram Mohan Rai's thought? First, he exposed the irrational religious practices and dogmas. So, uh, while he is establishing the superiority or not superiority, the true meaning, the true message of Hinduism, he is also articulating or identifying the irrational practices and dogmas in Hinduism. So, that is his one, uh, one, uh, one approach. The second is to promote western liberal education, we will discuss it in our next class or next lecture. And then he is also identifying or acknowledging the role of a state to uh, support these two programs, 
to eradicate the social and religious dogmas and uh, superstitions and also in the promotion of western liberal education he acknowledged the role of state and that is why he is uh, the first modern indian political thinkers in a way which uh, uh, believes in and acknowledge the role of state in reforming society in reforming religion bringing about liberal education that is something which helps in the overall development of individual and society in general so uh, that is the three approach we can find in raja ram mohan roy about social uh, reforms movement he also believes and himself established some association to as a instrument for social and political transformation so in 1815 see he established atmiya sabha uh, in 1821 he established the kolkata unitarian association and in 1828 he established brahmo samaj which is later known came to be known as the brahmo samaj and this is um, uh, something which uh, remains or which contributed in uh, transforming the individual and the community about their views on true religion uh, or enable them to fight the superstitions irrational dogmas and practices that was widely prevalent so he considered these sabhas as a kind of um, instrument for social and political transformation in the society so these kind of sabhas and association promoted his ideas of monotheism true religion spirit of religion which helps in the establishing or developing morality or cultivating morality and ethics in individuality there he he did not follow in any kind of creed or any kind of division uh, on the basis of caste religion or it, uh, any uh, such social affirmative identities so these sabhas and associations were open for all section of uh, society including men and women so um, that is uh, his um, uh, contribution now the theology so if you talk about so brahma samaj remains um, and played a very significant role in reforming a lot of social and religious evil practices in uh, in um, bengal and also in other parts of india and it was first association which uh, really uh, help and uh, help in the organization of uh, uh, traditional orthodox uh, orthodox society to think or articulate about religion in a very different way so uh, the theological basis of organization that ramon roy founded in 1828 that is brahm sabha was the theistic reading of the upanishads which he interpreted as promulgating a non ritualistic interior worship of the one true be- being so that's the focus of brahma samaj where there is no idol worship no scripture no preaching it's like uh, individual engagement with the one supreme being which is the um, spirit or the true meaning of any uh, any religion which he, uh, he which he believes so there was a no ritual ceremonial practices that was there in the brahma uh, brahma sabha it focuses on the interior worship the personal worship of one true uh, being that comes from his monotheistic belief he tried to end the monopoly of orthodox brahmins over the sacred text now that's also his uh, significant contribution in social religious reforms where in india you have a very small section of society uh, which controls over the access of religious texts to the larger section so because these texts are in sanskrit and learning of sanskrit was limited to a particular uh, section uh, raja ram mohan roy opposed to such restriction as far as the access to the religious text and sacred text in hinduism was concerned so uh, he wanted to make such text available to the larger public in their vernacular language and he argued that the ancient hindu texts and the vedas including upanishad upheld the doctrine of monotheism and to prove this point he actually translated many uh, hindu sacred text from sanskrit into bengali and that's um, the beginning when you find in many modern indian languages Uh, there is the translation from original sanskrit in the local languages so that people themselves can 
read such text in their own language and then develop their understanding or find out the true meaning or the true message of Hindu religion for him was the monotheistic belief in. So, that is the, um, the overall um, understanding of uh, Raja Ram Mohan Roy and his beliefs in, um, uh, in religious reforms and why religious reforms is the basis for the social and political transformation as well. And uh, against the colonial, uh, colonial, colonial regime also, uh, this is the interesting point to note that um, the response of Indians to the colonial domination or hegemony, uh, not just in uh, military, political, uh, physical uh, sense, but also in the intellectual uh, space, the response that comes is from the uh, vocabulary which is deeply religious. Now, um, and that is there on the both side, the Christian missionaries and uh, colonial administration promoting, patronizing such Christian missionary on the one hand and many uh, Indian intellectuals and thinkers articulating about this uh, true meaning, the superiority in a sense of um, a Hinduism on the other. You find Raja Ramon Rai somewhat uh, uncomfortable with uh, this assertion on the part of Christianity or Christian missionaries that Christian or Christianity is the only true uh, religion. On the other hand, the conservative which believes in the status quo, idol worship or uh, in, in fact sanctioning certain uh, uh, evil practices like sati and um, uh, many other uh, uh, ritualistic ceremonial practices in Hinduism, which in, in no way help in the individual self-improvement or Im empowerment. Raja Ram Mohan Rai was using rational approach to understand uh, uh, the true meaning of any religion, yet he was against this uh, assertion of superiority from uh, superiority of religion on the part of uh, Christianity. There is one anecdote which help us to understand, uh, understand this more. So, there was one kind of rumor that he, uh, because of his criticism of idol worship or uh, irrational practices in Hinduism, he was converted to Christianity. And there was one Christian missionary which sent him a kind of uh, pleasing uh, or greetings and uh, welcomed him in the true fold or true uh, religion uh, or superior religion of uh, Christianity. To which uh, Raja Ram Mohan Rai replied that I am not someone who is going to follow, leave one kind of uh, superstitions and irrational practices to join other kind of superstitions and irrational practices. So, he was uh, uncomfortable with the irrational super, superstitious or ignorant practices and belief systems in all the religion. Yet, at the same time, he was uh, establishing the true meaning of all the religion is more or less same, which you will find is there in other thinkers as well, like uh, Vivekananda, Arvindu Ghosh. Uh, to some extent um, uh, Tagore and also certainly Gandhi. So, uh, he was actually trying to establish the true meaning of religion, which will help in the empowerment of, um, of uh, individual as well as the society, the community. So, he considered the religious reforms in India as the basis for social and political transformation as well. So, using the idiom to respond to the colonial challenges in the uh, in the idioms of uh, religion, where the true meaning of religion is there in the monotheism and Brahma Samaj and other associations, certainly Brahma Samaj uh, played a very significant role in promoting his ideals. So, on this theme of religious reforms in um, the thinking of Raja Ram Mohan Roy, you can uh, look at uh, this political thought in modern India by Pentham and Duj. You can also look at M. P. Singh and Himan Surai's uh, their book on Indian political thought themes and thinkers, again on Raja Ram Mohan Roy. From Ram Chandra Guha, you can also find uh, on uh, Raja Ram Mohan Roy. And uh, this book, you can find some of the original excerpts from Raja Ram Mohan Roy about uh, religious reforms, monotheism, colonial response and etc. So, that is all for today. Thank you.